Hello, my name is Voya and welcome to my deep guide. In today's episode, we are finally, finally, finally taking an in-depth look at the Lenovo Smart Paper. Now, if you guys recall, I have received a pre-production unit way back when in March. Now, since that time, uh, there has been like mm, huh, lots of things going on, been Lenovo like web page being pulled and then like 404 and no information, then a delay, and then it was supposed to come out in May, it didn't come out. Now it finally came out in June and now it came out, but in yeah, Europe, not in America, and we don't really have have uh, information of when and if it's going to be available in North America. So it's a bit of a, like a chaotic kind of a story and a launch for the Lenovo Smart Paper, but it's finally here. And that is a very nice thing to see. Before we dig in with the review, I would just like to invite you to visit mydeepguide.com shop. If you like the work that I do, then check out the products out there, which are the MDO and MMP, My Daily Organizer, hyperlinked PDF file, which is your organizer, yearly, quarterly, monthly, weekly, daily organizing needs. And MMP is MDG Meeting Planner, which is also a hyperlinked PDF file that helps you centralize, organize, and simplify your meeting needs. If you are interested to find out more about any or both of these products, you can check out the links down below for dedicated playlists. And if you want to support the independence of My Deep Guide, uh, yep, yeah, all the purchasing of these products directly supports that cause. So let's take an in-depth look finally at the Lenovo Smart Paper and see what it has to bring to the e-ink table. And here is the Lenovo Smart Paper, finally the officially released version. So no longer the prototype or anything like that. This is what you actually get when you buy it in the store. First, the overview. What is Lenovo Smart Paper? Well, Lenovo Smart Paper is an Android 11 powered uh, e-ink 10.3 inch tablet that uses a monochromatic screen and uses a standard resolution that gives you 227 ppi not the 300 ppi that we are starting to see emerge as a new standard for 10.3 inches as such it is a little bit different than what you would expect from either the devices that we have on either end so let's say super minimalistic and digital paper focused types of devices such as the remarkable or on the other end of the spectrum you have like a full-on android google play enabled uh tablet that just happens to be using an e-ink screen which would be all of the books devices on the other end uh, lenovo smart paper would fit somewhere in between these two with a little bit more of an emphasis here. So it is focused to be a digital paper replacement tool or a notebook replacement tool with some added functionalities and benefits of it being an Android uh, when compared to a uh, Remarkable device. But it's far more minimalistic and distraction free like the Remarkable is than it is on a uh, books device. So it, this device just happens to be running on Android 11 underneath, but it doesn't have a Google Play Store. You can't sideload apps. You can't do any of those things. It doesn't have a camera. It doesn't have all any of these distraction things. It's a focused device, but with just a little bit of kind of sprinkled spices and top to make it more accessible and one more thing this device seems to have been geared designed and focused with students in mind or study in mind of any kind of sort and this is something that you will see throughout the device and that's kind of the accent that I will be coming back through because you will just see that while it lacks some really obvious things it has some things that no other device has and it's like and it's really really geared like specifically to the um yep yeah, to a student taking notes so that's basically the overview of the lenovo smart paper 
The initial appeal of the Lenovo Smart Paper was its price. As its original price, when it was uh, announced way back in February, March this year, was quoted to be like at 399 US dollars, and that you would get like the whole shebang, the device, a really, really good pen, and a magnetic folio or a carry, yeah, carry folio that comes as a standard with it, and also a USB ca cable and a charger which is a difference so all of that was supposed to be available for 399 us dollars but it's not when it actually came out the price is 499 euros and that places it firmly into the all of the competitors uh, categories granted you do get a fairly comprehensive package but that main advantage which was the price that you would get so much for so little money that actually is gone so let's start with the design and the build quality well right out of the bat this is a lenovo design and a lenovo build quality and what does that mean well it means absolutely perfect execution of the uh the proposed design that they have for their device and i'm happy to say that they haven't really changed anything which is a good thing because there was pretty much nothing wrong with the design and the hardware execution of the prototype device that i had earlier what you have here is a wonderfully manufactured uh and executed uh, tablet that is of a very very beautiful design yes we have the standard metal bucket design but everything is metal the whole bucket is metal and even this side here is metal and even the pen is metal so it's really 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 feels premium all over the place unlike the tab ultra which does have uh, edge problems this is how it's supposed to be done so the screen itself the surface of the screen should be flush with the bucket edge so that when you actually rest your hand on it you do not feel that edge poking into you whatsoever furthermore the edges are chamfered in a very very nice way and the execution is just absolutely flawless from every angle that you actually take a look at this device it is absolutely flawless and it looks gorgeous the device weighs at around 408 grams which is actually really really good for an all metal and glass uh device because that's what lenovo smart paper is it's all metal and just a glass panel on top um but to top it all off this is something that they're not touting but <laughs> they certainly could if they wanted to uh, lenovo smart paper is 5.5 millimeters thin this is less than one millimeter thicker than Remarkable 2, but it does have a front light. This is a really, really important consideration to kind of keep in mind, because if you recall, uh, Note Air was the thinnest uh, front lit device in the world, which actually it was, but it was also marketed as such because it was a direct competition with Remarkable. But that one was 5.7 millimeters. This. 5.5 that's very very sweet and you can actually feel that difference definitely when you're holding it in your hand so that kind of combined thing and plus this really really nice uh wider section here for use does lend itself for for it to be like a digital notepad or a digital paper replacement tool overall i think that it's a gorgeous looking device it's modern it's extremely well uh built and i think that the thinness and the weight everything is just like snap on point and it is a very very beautiful device as far as the layout goes on the top you have the power button on the side we don't have anything on the bottom we just have this is for service tool so nothing that you are going to be concerned with and on the other side we have the usb-c uh, for power and data communication dual microphones here on the 
the back we only have the Lenovo logo, legal mumbo jumbo on the back and we have this uh, brushed versus somewhat matte uh, side of the uh, yeah matte uh, side of the aluminium back and this here is a plastic uh, line that is allowing transmittance of wireless communication. In the front I don't know if the camera can pick this up but under the glass panels you will see actually two little kind of let's see maybe the camera picks it there we go that's the one so that's sensor number one this is sensor number two and that actually allows the Lenovo smart paper to sense the lighting conditions around it and auto adjust brightness according to what the sensors see as far as the specifications go go well it's using a rock uh, chip processor which is using a quad core arm cortex a55 so the standard thing that we've seen in uh yeah, Kobo Ellipse and everywhere else so that one actually has a 1.8 gigahertz uh and the built-in apu uh gpu in this whole apu unit is the arm mali g55 so fairly standard stuff um, it has four gigabytes of uh, non-upgradable of course lpddr4 ram which is quite sufficient for this kind of configuration has 64 gigabytes of emmc 5.1 uh, storage non-expandable but you do get 64 gigabytes of it which is really really good to see it does not have any speakers but it does have a dual microphone array here uh, so then you're kind of wondering like what's the whole point well this is a bluetooth enabled device so you can attach a bluetooth periphery audio periphery of any kind that you choose so bluetooth speaker bluetooth um, uh, headphones or anything or earbuds and then use it with the smart paper that way it has no camera and it does not have voice call support important to know as far as sensors goes, it has an accelerometer, so it's able to kind of sense, oh, I am, now I'm in landscape mode, now I am in portrait mode. Uh, we have the ambient light sensor and the hall sensor, and I believe that's these two combined. It is equipped with a 3550 milliamp uh, battery. It is saying that we have the 10.3 uh, yeah, uh, inch uh, 227 ppi monochromatic screen, e ink screen, multi touch capable, and uh, contrast ratio is 8.0. Um, it is equipped with a dual front light with 24 brightness level uh, and 24 adjustable temperature tone temperature tones so it has cold and warm front light enabled very importantly it has an anti-glare surface which is exceptionally good like the anti-glare surface and the paper-like surface that it actually gives is really, really, really good. So that's something that you can definitely keep in mind. It is, of course, capacitive touch and most importantly, the pen that's, that's supplied is an EMR vacuum standard. So that means that if for some reason you don't like this pen and there is a reason, it has no eraser, it has no button, right? So that is a perfectly very valid reason to say like, hey, I don't want that pen. I want my Samsung S six or s7 or uh, regular or light pen which has that button and it has a magnet and eh, it can't fit there but it can fit on the side so that kind of replacement stuff you can uh, do but you should be aware that the uh yeah the the placement of the pen magnetic wise they're gonna move it but if you don't care about that you can flip it around and it's gonna be there and it's gonna be held by the really cool little pouch that the flip cover has so yeah uh, emr wacom pens supported on the smart paper it has uh, bluetooth 5.2 dual band wi-fi you get pre-installed clock calculator uh, calendar convert handwriting to text document support epub pdf microsoft office that's it uh, ebook e ebooks.com app record live dictation email search all handwritten notes and content however more stuff like pc and mobile data synchronization is supported with lenovo smart paper app but there's a caveat for that but we'll get to that a little bit later so those are the specifications of the device and as i said super thin very nice weight um, so yes on paper it delivers a lot especially with a 64 gigabytes of storage for that price tag so even though it is priced higher 
it is something that kind of still makes sense, but it is definitely on the pricier side of things. So in the package is included the standard Lenovo EMR smart paper pen. And this is a really, really pretty pen. It is again, executed to perfection. This is all aluminum. It is painted in a beautiful, beautiful kind of metal gray like the device and it matches it absolutely perfectly which is very very nice to see and most importantly it's using the standard nibs i can't take them out now but it's the standard nibs that you have with the remarkable books and all the others so if you don't like the feel of the nib which is good but a little bit on the harder side but it's quite quite a good feeling nib you can actually replace it with something that is more to your liking this is a magnetic pen so the magnet is very strong let's see can you pick up the device via the pen magnet alone easily can you swing the device now this uh, i don't know of any other device that actually can do that so really really strong magnetic hold here but you don't really need to worry about that because you have a dedicated space here for the pen and in combination with the protective cover that actually uh, makes sure that you won't lose your pen even if you hold it uh, Yep, if you hold it here, uh, if, if it can't really get kind of knocked out, as you will see when we check out the cover. Uh, the pen itself feels wonderful to write with. The balance is perfect. The, the, the way it holds in the hand is really, really good. So everything about the pen I really love, but it has one huge flaw and one huge omission, and that is that it does not have the button. It does not have the eraser. I would understand if... Lenovo would supply like an alternative pen as well, but I really don't get it. If this is aimed at a student who is taking copious amounts of notes during research, lectures, etc., etc., the very last thing that should be on that person's mind is to fumble around the menu uh, to just find the eraser so that they can erase it instead. Why? Why doesn't this pen have a button to actually just support that i i really don't understand i for me this is a very very glaring omission and an unfortunate kind of a uh, omission because otherwise this pen would have been absolutely perfect but yeah, it has that one massive problem. This is made so that it works perfectly in conjunction with the flip book cover, which is also magnetic. So you just simply put the device and it centers itself exactly where it needs to because of the magnetic polarities. So let's do it again. It just kind of and kind of centers itself. And you have this indentation here, which is basically holding your pen secure so even if it gets hit or anything like that doesn't matter your pen is safe and sound in the pouch itself the cover itself is of a very very nice uh, smooth kind of faux leather type of quality it has follows that same design that we saw on the back of the device so one uh, two-thirds of the of the surface of a certain quality one third of another quality just a discrete Lenovo here and that's it nothing on the back really really lovely execution quality no stitching however so that's something that I don't know we will see how those corners are going to survive uh you know frequent taking out of the bag putting it into the bag and uh, yeah all, all, all transportation all that kind of stuff but it seems okay however stitching would have been a nice thing to have seen it has an auto wake up and auto sleep functionality which is great and how does it hold the device the magnet itself let's see Okay, so it holds it okay. So I would grade that at around C plus B minus, B minus I think, because I really do have to kind of pull a bit higher to, to, to actually get it to drop off. So I think that for normal use case scenarios, this flipbook cover will do its job really well. But please keep in mind that this the, the name of the product is flipbook cover, cover being the keyword here. So that means 
This is not a case, so do not expect uh, case level protection uh, for your device from a cover because this is a cover, not a case. Battery life on uh, Lenovo Smart Paper is actually quite okay. It's not amazing, it's not bad, it's actually very, very good. I would give it a B. So uh, with a 3550 milliamp battery, I believe that it has that big of a battery, um, I've performed the standardized set of tests, which means that for the reader performance, I would put the device into three different states, front light at 100% intensity, 30% in intensity, and zero percent intensity and uh, then I would manually flip pages every 20 seconds one page flip and I would do that for one hour in each of the settings average out values and then basically see what kind of performance we are looking at and then for the note taking I would do the same thing except that I would be writing for one hour continuously and in this case I was testing only the realistic options such as the 30% and 0% with the front light mainly because when we're talking about note taking the primary battery consumption is going to be the system itself the CPU processing because the input of processing and note taking is the most processor intensive task that Lenovo Smart Paper will be doing and uh, in that case the front light really doesn't make that big of a difference. So the results, the battery life results are for reader performance with the front light at a hundred percent intensity. It was spending around four percent battery per hour which roughly averages out to around 25 hours of continuous reading time with the front light set at maximum and this is all the tests that are done with Wi-Fi on. Uh, with the front light bumped down to 30 percent that average goes down to three percent per hour or 33.3 hours per charge and when you turn the front light way off then uh, the consumption was actually way way down to around one and a half percent at that point I can't really measure out uh, uh, precisely enough I would have to do manual flipping for about three to six hours to get it precise but I think that this is around one one and a half percent which means that we're talking roughly about 66 to 100 hours of reading time per charge without the front light, which is really, really good. As far as note taking goes, the uh, battery performance was identical and that's expected because of the stuff that I talked about before. So at 30% or at 0% front light, the um, uh, smart paper was spending around 6% per hour. Uh, hour which means that we can uh, expect something around 16 hours of continuous writing per battery charge with Wi-Fi on. And that is an excellent, excellent type of a performance. As far as image quality goes, it's okay. I'm gonna zoom in so that you can actually see uh, things, but you need to understand that this device is not made for uh, yeah, outstanding image quality and things like that. And as such, you will see um, yeah, there's there's no color banding and things like that. So that's good. And black is rendered kind of nicely and precisely. But when you actually get to the content itself and the words, or in this case notes, for example, you will see that while they're perfectly legible and readable, let's zoom in to the maximum, uh, that really good uh, uh, screen surface that gives an excellent uh, anti-glare uh, properties and very very paper-like uh, um, experience when writing it will have a negative effect on the image quality like it does on the Remarkable 2. So you lose a little bit of sharpness, you lose a little bit of contrast, but overall I think it's a good balance and if this is primarily to be used as a writing notepad, so as such I think that it delivers really really well, but you do need to keep this in mind, especially in combination with 227 ppi, it's uh, if you're reading a small text and due to the lack of any PDF formatting options, that's an additional thing that's kind of doesn't doesn't really work. So, yeah, you got to be careful with what types of documents you will be able to easily read on the smart paper paper and what types of documents you won't be. Uh, front light is actually really nice and this is turned off completely as you can see and then you can 
gradually increase it and as you do so for example this is uh, this is exactly halfway it gives a very very nice kind of a, a vibe this is a little bit darker than it is in reality but um, yeah it, it has a very nice quality to it and it goes all the way up which is actually quite bright and quite nice to look at um, you also have the color temperature control so the warm light or the cold light and either of them however you use them the uniformity is really really good of the front light on the smart paper and I really love the option of actually showing the numbers above because that's something the books never does and they really really should because you can actually have uh, a good idea of where you're at if you're using 20% 30% half or whatever it is another thing that i really like is that the adaptive brightness is not aggressive at all as you can see it's actually going to aim to try and see and this is really like a lot darker in this on the camera itself but in reality this gives you like a look uh how a paper would be in kind of semi-dark conditions and i think that the adaptive brightness works really really well but for the purpose of this uh, demo so that the camera can see it i'm just going to pump up the brightness and the reason why it's so much darker is that i didn't want the image to explode when the brightness is crammed cranked up all the way to the highest setting so that you guys can actually see the uniformity of the front light uh, yeah in in a good way and just for clarity's sake this is how the image looks like when with my hands and adaptive brightness when it's turned on so it's actually quite a nice kind of a nicely balanced brightness that you can see on the uh, lenovo smart paper and a really cool thing to see as well again with the adaptive brightness now that i turned the light in the light box it actually goes all the way down to zero so you can i think it's a very safe bet to just turn the adaptive brightness on and not worry about it because when it's bright enough the device itself is just going to turn off the front light and it's going to turn it on when it deems that it's actually necessary and that's an excellent excellent thing to see now one of the obvious things that we really have to talk about when we're talking about a smart paper is the payment system for certain uh, functionalities that it has so it actually has four separate things that you would need to purchase in order to unlock certain functionalities of this device so these are paid services and i'm going to be looking at the phone here so that i can actually get the correct info just so you know where i'm looking down and um, the first one is actually the cloud storage so by default for free you have no cloud synchronization functionality whatsoever included with the lenovo smart paper now uh, you do have the option of uh yeah hooking up with the usb and manually transferring devices uh, the 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 files but that's about it so if you want any kind of integration with the outside world that's convenient that doesn't involve a cable and you manually doing this you will need to first of all open up a lenovo id account then second of all you would need to subscribe yourself to cloud storage and the cloud storage is I don't have the equivalent in US dollars because I can only get Norwegian crowner values, but you can do the conversions and then you can see what's it like. Uh, so for me, the five gigabytes of storage, that's the only option that I can choose. I could choose between having it for three months for 115 crowners, which is around nine dollars, nine something dollars or uh, five gigabytes per year which is 365 crowners and that's around 330 something bucks per year nothing obscene but it is just five gigabytes and this is a 464 gigabyte tablet so that's something that's definitely a thing to keep in mind then the second service that is also paid is speech transcription which means that it, you can actually dictate and it can voice to text basically and you can buy per uh, time so you can buy for one hour is 69 crowners for me and that's valid for one year so if you don't use that one hour in one year it expires 
Wow. Uh, then you can buy 30 minutes, which is 14 crowners, or you can buy 10 hours, which is 749 crowners. Uh, all of them valid for one year. The third service that uh, Lenovo Smart Paper offers is a uh, purchase characters um, to use speak function on Lenovo Smart Paper. And that is a uh, per spoken character, the speech function, you know, text to speech, that it speaks back to you, that it reads it to you when you're a student, that it wants you to want to listen to the book. That is built per character, not even per word, it's per character. 300,000 characters, uh, also valid just for one year, whether or not you use it or not. 209 crowners, 30,000 characters, 15 crowners, 50,000 characters, 40 crowners. That just sits really wrong with me. And the final uh, service that they have is conversion of the recordings to text for saving and sharing. And uh, that's basically translation, actually. They're putting it really, really wrong here. And this is the translation service, which is again per character. And I don't get how does that work because you're translating a word, not a character. And when you translate to another, you know, language, you're not translating letter for letter, you're translating words. So, okay, fine. 50,000 characters is 14 crowners. Again, uh, limit one purchase. What? So you can buy that once? You can't buy it? Okay, that's weird. Uh, 100,000 characters is 40 crowners, valid for one year, and uh, half a million characters is 185 t uh, crowners, also valid for one year. So, those are the services that are offered as extra paid services on the Lenovo Smart Paper. And for a device that is already costing 500 euros and is geared and aimed to and for students, I don't know. I, I see the logic behind it, but I somehow I can't really get behind this kind of thinking at all. All right, so let's now dig into the device itself. Now that we've covered all the hardware bases, let's see what the system is like. So when you power up the device, this is the user interface that we get. Uh, my viewers will remember that back in March, when I had the pre-production model, there was one very glaring question that was uh, kind of present. That was the user interface was incredibly similar, too similar, to the remarkable uh, platform's user interface. So much so that even the icons looked identical. Now, I don't know exactly what happened here because there was no talk, but shortly after the smart paper was kind of announced, it was pulled back, the page, the web page, the product page, web page kind of disappeared, and then it was a product delay until May, then it wasn't out in May, and then it went out in June, and now it's out here and the user interface is completely changed. Coincidence or not, I don't know, but what I'm happy about is that the change is good, so they haven't changed it in a bad way. It still has that kind of simplicity, but it's different enough from Remarkable, so that there's no more uh, um, kind of uh, confusion between, hey, what is, what is going on here? This is now a different UI and that's a good thing to see. Whether or not that delay and the UI uh, similarities are, is that a coincidence or not? I honestly don't know, but that's basically just a sequence of events. You make what you will out of it. The bottom line is we have an excellent device here with a very nice and readable UI, and I guess that's all that matters here. So when we take a look at this one, if you're coming from a remarkable device, you will find the layout fairly familiar and easy to kind of use. So we have on the uh, left hand side, we have the main icons here, such as the notebooks, library, apps, my device, where you can actually have your uh, folders. This is the Google Drive that I can synchronize to your Google Drive account. And we have the settings down here. On the top, we have my device, we have synchronization to Lenovo ID, uh, which is a paid service, so not free. 
search function for searching the files and here we have the option of that will change depending on which mode you are in so if i am in my device i will have the ability to create a new folder uh, switch between grid and list view and sort my uh, folders in uh, recently updated, last update, or alphabetical. If that switches to uh, apps, these are the apps that are pre-installed. As we've talked, we get file manager, email, calendar, clock, calculator, WPS office, ebook reader, and Firefox, and a search function for that, I guess, to search for an app. So let's say if I wanted to go Firefox, so can you search fire? No matches found. That is not a smart search because if I type in fire, I would expect it to find Firefox. So not, not great. Then we have the library down here and the library is <laughs> transferring and getting files onto the smart paper is not really that intuitive and that easy. Uh, sure, you can do the direct USB connection here, and that works. You can also download from the, um, yeah, okay, let's connect. You can also download from the Google Drive, which is okay. But uh, again, like with the Remarkable, at least it's not that bad. Everything that you download from uh, here, so let's say, for example, that I want to go and... Do, 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 I don't know, guitar tabs, open source, and maybe I want to download this. So he's going to please download a file and open it in my device. So you can't open the files directly from Google Drive. You need to download. And now you need to believe that it is downloading. However, there's no indication here whatsoever. Where's the downloading process? There's no notification that it's downloading. There's no progress notification here that is doing, doing anything. You can only see when it's, when it's done, it blinks, hey, I'm done. And, you know, kind of, that's it. But yeah, that's, that's that. And let's say you've downloaded it and you go to your library. It's not there. Where is it? Well, it's in your downloads folder. So here is the one that I've downloaded. So that's how that kind of thing functions. It's, uh, it's clumsy and it's incomplete because there is absolutely no need for having that uh, extra step that it downloads into a download. Why not instead have directly a question here? So let's say I want to download maybe, well, these are WAV files. I want to download review resources. There we go. I want to download this. And why doesn't it ask me download to download form, uh, download or download to library? It would be so easy to just kind of bypass that additional step of actually, you know, novice users being kind of confused. Where is my f file? I just downloaded my file, but it's not in my library. Well, you have to manually put the fo files that you want in the library. You have to manually place them there. How do you do that? Well, let's see here. This is what I downloaded. I can long press and select one or multiple files. In this case, let's select these two. Um, and I can then say move. And now it's going to ask me where. And it's going to tell you my device downloads in library. So those are the current folders that I have, but as if I were to make mo new folders, then maybe they would actually become available or not. But now I can choose library and then within library, you can place it into any subfolder that you want to create. And that's that. Something that I haven't tried and I would like to try and I think it's important is can I just create not into downloads, but into a uh, library? Can I just create a new folder? Uh, let's switch the language here and let's go test. Come on, test. There we go. Okay, and then move it to that folder. Okay, yeah, so you can. So that's a good thing that you can create um, uh, folders while you're in the move file mode. So that's how you have to move these files around. Um, there is a way when you actually kind of hook, hook up your uh, device to the computer, you can navigate to different files and folder structures. And I believe that if we go into the file manager here, you will be able to see that file structure, which is 
yeah, this is how the file structure actually looks like. And this is what you will see when you are uh, hooking it up to the PC. And the thing is that there is a way to get it directly into the library when you're transferring um, documents that way. So you can either go into, in this case, this, this number, and then you have my device, and then you will see the library. And this is where all of the things are, right? So if I were to transfer from my PC uh, files direct directly into this folder, they would appear here. Like on the Remarkable, uh, the swipe up brings you back home. So that's kind of an easy way to go around that. All right, so that's like the basic operations of how do you get the files onto uh, the the uh, Lenovo uh, without a Lenovo ID. If you have a Lenovo ID and you have a Lenovo app, then you can transfer it from the app in a much, much more easier way. But that is a paid service and you know i want to cover the free <laughs> way of doing it uh, yeah primarily the other stuff actually works fine um, but this is what you need to deal with if you don't want to pay for the lenovo id thing when we're dealing with the library and the documents let's continue in that light so the reader itself let's see the reader capabilities of it and let's go into test documents and let's open up first let's open up this one for example and that's my standard document that i use and this is the performance that you can actually see here so this is the normal performance it doesn't work on tabs you have to swipe to navigate left and right oh okay i went too much on the side you can tap in the middle to expose more options, tap in the middle to uh, hide it again. And uh, yeah, auto rotation works on its own. And that's pretty much that. So that works. Uh, but Lenovo Smart Paper has one more thing up its sleeve. And that is actually this section here. So when you swipe from the right corner down, you will expose more system options such as Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, screen rotation, mirror cast, because it has mirror cast option, which actually works. And then you have screen refresh modes. So you can do a full screen refresh this way, right? To clear out any ghosting. And you can choose between three levels of speed, such as clear, which is the slowest, and it is for uh, books that are yeah, ebooks. Then you have smooth, which is for books that have a lot of graphical content. And then you have fast, which is for browsing or yeah, anything other than that. So the difference is not that huge. So this is the smooth, this is the clear mode. You can see that this resembles the regal refresh mode where every time you refresh, there's very, very minimal ghosting that's left at all. And that is the whole point. Of course, it is the slowest uh, mode of refreshing. When we go to smooth, it is faster, considerably faster. Yet I don't see any active degradation or any ghosting issues that I can find. Because, you know, these images like that, they're just kind of, they, they could leave a lot of potential ghosting uh, uh, here, especially if we're going from this section, a lot of text, and then we go back into the image here, we don't really see any of the uh, ghosting issues there. And if you go to fast mode, then it looks like this. Uh, it is maybe marginally faster, and I still don't see any significant ghosting there's a bit more tiny bit of more of ghosting but really no massive degradation of quality or anything like that so yeah while you do have these modes uh, for me i found myself that i was in the smooth mode most of the time because it gave me this kind of best kind of a, a combination of the two Unfortunately, there's not much that we can cover as far as the functionality of the e-reader goes. The first gigantic problem that the e-reader has is that it does not support hyperlinks, right? So if you wanted to use MDO or MMP or, um, on a deal no smart paper, at the moment you can't because it does not support hyperlinks. But those organizers aside much more importantly if you're using a textbook and you want to use a table of contents and just like from the book books table of contents and just tap on a hyperlink to get to a chapter 
you can't. You will have to rely on the book's uh, own table of contents if it has it. Uh, if it doesn't have it, then then you have a problem and you have to manually navigate and try and find the page that you want, which is made uh, considerably more difficult because there's no, no previewing of the page where you're at. Neither does it tell you where, which page did you got to. So you have nothing with this kind of uh, yeah, slider for the progress slider. It's functional in the form that it's, it can, it's a slider and when you release it, it will move you to a page. But as far as UX usability goes, it is an absolute F because at the very minimum, what it should do is it should update the current page that you are at so that you know which page you're going to. And optimally, it would need to show a preview of the page that you are going, um, yep, yeah, sliding towards so that you know where you actually want to go. This way, nope, you, you just can't do that <laughs> at all. Also, uh, I would expect that you have the go to page option as well, either by double tapping here or maybe go to page here. So you can simply, if you know exactly the page where you want to go to, you just tap and type in the number and boom, you're on that page. So these are the absolute bare bone basics of the functionalities that a reader should have yet we don't have that on the smart paper yet what do we have well we have let's see as far as the functionalities go so you have table of contents if the uh if the document has a table of contents you are able to add bookmarks but the implementation of that is so backwards that it took me a really really a considerable amount of time to actually figure it out and not think that it doesn't have it, it has it but look at this so first of all the thing that everybody thinks, how do you bookmark? Well, you tap on the corner. Well, no, not on smart paper for whatever reason. It needs to be more obtuse. So you need to expose the menu, okay? So now I have bookmark icon here. If I go here, I have bookmarks as well. Now, my logic is if I go here and this shows me a table of contents, then this button here next to it should show me the list of my bookmarks. Instead, this is the button that you use to add a bookmark, but inconveniently it says add bookmarks, which doesn't mean anything. It should say bookmark added. So at least you have the indication of when the bookmark, uh, when a page is bookmarked or not, but I really don't understand why do we have to go here and then there and not just have an upper right corner like virtually every other device has as a functionality, that's a standard. So I do not understand why isn't it using it as a standard. How do you actually take a look at where your bookmarks are? Well, there's two ways. You can either go into the options and go into your bookmarks and then you can see your bookmarks and manage them such as delete them. Or you can actually tap on the bookmark when you're on a bookmark page and it gives you, you know, the shortcut to the bookmarks overview page as well. So that part is fine. It's just that the adding of the bookmarks is quite, quite confusing. Then you have the search functionality, which searches through the text. So let's say four, and then it's going to go search and then brrr, there we go. So then we have this one and there you go. But it works only on the documents that have text as text. It will not work on documents that are just scanned images, just so you know, because that's not doesn't have OCR capabilities. Um, then we have two things such as PDF and a study mode. That icon there is study mode. So PDF is like your PDF formatting and that is being unbelievably generous if we're going to talk about that because this thing is can only do one thing and it does it badly, right? So what do I mean? Well, you can adjust the view of the PDF files and you adjust it by changing the scale. Okay. So maybe I want, you know, just to be able to see it like this and then flip it into my landscape mode, right? So I confirm it and it stretches the uh, rendering of the PDF <laughs> file. This is broken. This, there's very, very few 
situations when you would actually want to do this and you know my initial idea wouldn't work because it's not really zooming to fit to width it's just it's 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 broken this is not done as far as functionality goes so and that's the only pdf formatting functionality that you have so the only P pdf formatting functionality that you have is broken which leaves smart paper virtually with absolutely no formatting capabilities for pdfs whatsoever you can't pinch to zoom you can't adjust the zooming without stretching it and it doesn't have aspect ratio hold it's it's not something that you can use at the moment then you have the study mode which gets you into a split screen mode which is an auto translate mode so the idea here is that if you're studying and you have a textbook that you need to translate to your language which is absolutely great but then you're like smacked real hard real real hard by this thing which is you're aiming this for students and you're gonna charge them per translated word this is not even a service you buy how many words you will be able to translate and that's that so if i find like an average page very small page it's 2886 words and what i've purchased is 50,000 words so I am going to do a translate. I haven't done it before because I didn't want to waste it because it's a paid service. So let's see how does this work. Okay. And let's see. I've translated to... <laughs> I'm really sorry. I know you guys don't understand, but this translation here, Chapman... <laughs> Chapman in Smrlivka. What the hell? Wait, wait, I, I need to find... Where is that? Oh my god. Well, actually, yes, uh, the, the translation is somewhat... He did the best that he could because the name is Chapman and Smelly. And yes, Smrlivka is basically what you would use as a name if somebody was named Smelly, but, you know, kind of typed differently. Sorry, sorry, this really caught me by surprise. So it's working extraordinarily well. It's really, really good as far as the translation goes. Uh, and it better well be good because now I have, yeah, 48,000 words uh, left available. Plus, it has a maximum word translation limit of 2,000. So you can only translate 2,000 words per translate kind of uh, go. And that's your study mode. That's it. You can increase and decrease the uh, text font size here on the side. So incredibly useful for studying, but also really, really inconvenient and really, really expensive. And students are not really flush with money, are they? Yet this is kind of rough. This, this is really rough. So it, it has that feature, but to charge it per word is... Yeah, that, that, that stings a lot. All right, so what are the other things that we can have? Well, let's explore the top one. You can, of course, make notes. Make notes on my document. Right? Uh, but there's no layers. Uh, you have your three brushes. You don't have the full spectrum of brushes that you have in the notebook. And you have your erase uh, options here. Erase all, selection, and everything like that. The highlighter works, but it's not a smart highlighter yeah, like you have on the Remarkable. So uh, it's kind of, yeah, like that and you can actually switch between colors and these colors when exported they will be actually reflected in the pdf itself also they are rendered in a different way so you do have a highlighter functionality which is a good thing uh it's kind of basic but it works so that's that's nice thing to see but it would be nicer to actually have a little bit more um brush options but then again the ones that you do have 
fine liner and calligraphy pen why not the ink pen why the calligraphy pen like of all the things it would have been nice to be able to actually choose that option and you have the undo functionality uh but not redo so if i undo i can't redo right if i accidentally do that again weird immersive reading i'm not gonna cover because that's basically um playing you some preset of pre-selected meditative tunes and sounds that if you have headphones you can turn it on and it's just gonna play back some music into your headphones while you're reading i think that's a nice thing to have as it doesn't have any other musical capabilities uh but it does have that option so that's an interesting thing to kind of see then you have your page management which is this right but it has zero functionality right so if i wanted to select a page and let's say for example export a page or a set of pages i can't do anything the only thing that you can do with your page management is to navigate right to navigate to the page that you want to plus it's fairly slow as you can see and then you can tap on a page that you want to go to and there it is um Again, like with the progress bar imp implementation, this is, uh, as far as I'm concerned, below minimum. And this would be another F, as far as functionality, <laughs> F for functionality um, um, on the reader side of things, because uh, there's no management here. Page management should mean export page, export selected pages, um, delete a page, insert a page, reorder pages if you want things to that nature but hey hey we do have go to so you can go to page management go to page number they have the functionality so all you need to do is actually place that go to functionality where you need it which is in the progress here because we don't have anything else so that would be a nice thing to have it let's say go to page there as well bookmarks we've seen does it understand content on pages such as can i see pages that have notes on it nope you, you you don't have that option either and then you can share and then in the share option it's again it's implemented but it's implemented in such a strange way because you have export format currently only pdf fine you can't export these pngs okay and then page range is like this so you can use grid view as well and then you have the option of selecting these pages well i'm sorry but if you have all of this why wasn't that part of the page management thing where you already have it so you can just long press and select the pages and then click on share isn't that like the most logical way of doing these things instead of going there share choose okay then select pages and then do an export so um yeah some some serious optimizations of the ux especially of like uh, the, the interaction steps is needed for the yeah, this one now the last thing that i want to cover is that you do have the option of underlying underlining and selecting text basically and here you have the same thing you have the translation you have the dictionary which will work for let's like this so caused dictionary then you have meaning of the word cause which is great and it's free imagine that it's a free service uh, and it can speak things to you if you have Bluetooth devices uh, marked. So uh, another thing that you can also do is you can copy it and you can also do the Wikipedia search for something like this because it will automatically open up the Firefox because it is uh, it has a browser so it can actually browse. So you can automatically go to the Wikipedia and see the reference for that so for example there and let's see can i do a wiki search that's meaningful yeah and that works so this this part of quickly looking up something is really really helpful 
And considering the translation costs so much, it's nice to see it free. <laughs> like, yeah. Plus, you can also select this whole thing and then you can copy the, uh, uh, the content, right? But what you can paste it to, I don't really know because it doesn't have that much functionalities as far as, you know, uh, where you would be able to paste that content. But there you go. So no hyperlinks, very limited functionalities as far as this goes, no formatting abilities whatsoever. Uh, it has some extra functionalities which are kind of interesting, especially that translate one. It works really well, but it costs per word, which is really, really an ouchie. It hurts quite a bit. Has an excellent Wikipedia functionality and things like that. Has very confusing bookmarking functionality. So the way i would say it is that you can definitely see that this is the first uh, iteration of their user interface and ux but they really really need to get somebody on board who has already experience with all the other devices so that they know what is standard and how it should be used because people who are buying this sure there will be first time e-ink users and they won't know for better. But there's going to be also a bunch of people who are coming and transitioning from an existing platform. And there are a set of standards that are uh, standardized across devices. And you know, there's absolutely zero reason why Lenovo Smart Paper would be the odd one out. Just because you can't bookmark here. You can't see the preview of the page. You can't see which page you want to go to, etc. And you don't have hyperlinks in PDFs, etc, etc. So hopefully these are simply growing pains um but i hope that the reader side of things grows out of them quickly because this um yeah th th that that can turn into something quite quite unfortunate I was very curious to actually do the desktop test on the Lenovo Smart Paper because I noticed something different between this unit and this OS and the previous unit that I had. It felt considerably quicker. And I'm actually quite happy that I did the original desktop test on the previous unit because there is a difference and the difference is important one. So the original latency on the pre-production unit when I did the desktop test was at 29.6 milliseconds of the yeah, uh, stroke uh, latency. Now, on this version, and remember, software can actually improve this even further, but even as it is now, the latency writing speed on the Lenovo Smart Paper is up to 20.67 milliseconds, which places the Lenovo Smart Paper right in the third place, just behind the Scribe and the Tab Ultra. And actually, that means that because Remarkable 2 is still at 23.79 milliseconds, that Lenovo Smart Paper is faster by almost 4 milliseconds, or let's say 3 milliseconds, than Remarkable 2. That's quite interesting. While I was writing on the Lenovo Smart Paper, I kept actually coming back, and I mentioned it several times now, that the surface, the writing surface, the paper-like surface is really, really pleasant and really good. So when I did the surface resistance test, I was actually not surprised to see that the reason why I reacted so well is that the uh, surface resistance is around 35.23% of the surface resistance to the paper. Well, a meaningless kind of comparison to the paper but it's meaningful when you compare it between the devices because that means that it feels roughly the same like Kindle Scribe does and Kindle Scribe feels really really good. So that means that Lenovo does as well. 
All right, so we've covered the reader stuff. Let's check out the notebook. And um, yeah, let's let's just open up a new notebook. Um, okay, so that's a new notebook. I can rename it in the top corner. I can just say my new notebook. Uh, nope, there we go, notebook, there we go, that's okay. And this is the layout of the notebook. You can always double tap on the screen in the middle to hide the top menu completely. And this side menu is also, it's possible to hide it. You can alternatively tap on these icons here to expose these things. So you can have a fully focused view of the notebook. Let's do first a template, which can be added by choosing the template icon or by going to layers and then choosing the, uh, oh, no, you can't. Okay, so it can only be added through the template function. And you can choose between portrait and landscape templates. And for this purpose, let's use the this kind of a template, aligned template here. Writing on the smart paper is really, really pleasant. It's fast, it's responsive, and the way it captures your handwriting is really, really good. The uh, paper surface is really nice, the pen is really nice. And if I had to compare it, I would compare it to the Remarkable 2 feel. Granted, this nib and the pen is a little bit on the harder side, but if I switch to a familiar pen, like my Samsung S6 Lite, then it's actually softer and more pleasant for me to write than uh, Remarkable 2 when I write with the same pen on either of the two. So for me and my own personal sens sensitivities, sensibilities, um, I prefer the writing feel and the writing experience on the smart paper than on the Remarkable 2, but they are most definitely of a very, very similar character. So if you like how, like how Remarkable 2 uh, writes, then you will most definitely like how the Smart Paper 2 feels like when writing. One other thing where I think Smart Paper is also better than the uh, than the Remarkable is in the rendering itself because it doesn't have smoothing, it doesn't have anti-aliasing, so it's not gonna do that, but it's not as jaggedy as the Remarkable is. And the end result is that the written content is actually quite pretty and quite a lot prettier and more legible and it looks a lot more like my own handwriting than it does on a Remarkable 2 because Remarkable 2 has some issues as far as the quality, the display quality of what you actually write on it is not that good. It's very jaggedy and it's not that precise and smart paper is actually quite a lot better than the Remarkable 2 in that aspect as well. Um, navigation on the uh, notebooks is basically, you know, you swipe here, you swipe there. It's not really a fast device, so it's going to have those loading uh, bars there. And the more content you have, you will have those slowdowns. So I've experienced on larger notebooks that they kind of get slowed down. And when you actually swipe there, then temporarily content of the previous page kind of blinks and then the new one is there. So again, very much growing pains are present in all aspects of the smart paper notebook included, unfortunately. So as functionalities go, well, um, you double tap, as I said, to enter the full screen mode. You can tap on the icon here to expose it, expand it, or collapse it. You swipe left and right to flip pages on the mode, uh, uh, in the uh, mode here. We have the search option and we can search uh, this. This and then he's gonna go there. Two matches, one match found, and he found it. This okay, so let's try quite. What's happening here? Um, okay, well, did I have like one search? I paid for it. <laughs> Uh, why is search now grayed out? That I can't answer you because that's kind of strange. And now I can search again, okay? So recent searches, so let's try quite. 
Okay, match is found on that page. I get to that page, but the search is grayed out once you've used it and you go to your page. I mean, if I flip a page, we go back. No, nope, it's grayed out. Um, okay, so now you have like a limitation of let's see how it works in another notebook. So this one was a uh, landscape notebook when I was testing Miracast as well. So let's see, Miracast. Let's do a search on Miracast. Ah, this should be landscape as well if we're in landscape mode. No matches found. Hmm. Okay, so it's a bit hit and miss. And again, the implementation, I, I apologize, but there's a really angry magpie right next to me. I think that he's putting his input here into the review. So uh, yeah, the functionality is there to search for your handwriting uh, notes, but the functionality is a little strange. So the, the main thing is like, it's not 100% that it's gonna find what you're looking for. Uh, but the second thing is that that search functionality kind of disappears after doing it once, which I really don't understand, but reappears when you reopen the notebook. So. I don't know what that's all about. So in the options, we have page management, uh, which is the page management. And bizarrely here, you do have the expected behavior. So the notebook page management works exactly as you would want it to and expect it to, yet the PDF page management doesn't, which just is really, really bizarre. But it's a good thing to see that the notebooks at least have that functionality that you wanted, such as delete page, copy page, share and convert to text. So we do have the convert to text option. Let's do that. So let's see how does it do it. That's taking quite a long time for such a small paragraph. Maybe he's confused by the lines. But this is really taking a long time. So this is how writing is on Swert paper. It sounds good, feels very much like the RM2 and is quite fast as well. Like my Sunning uh, 56 liter or Samsung S6 Lite, but I can't really fault it for that because the way I wrote it was dreadful. So that makes sense. Then I can actually switch to another language if I wanted to. And there's a big line of languages. These are the languages that you can use. You can pause and find if there's a language that uh, suits you. And then you can share this. And I guess it's gonna generate as a text file. And then you can send it to email, your Google Drive or WPS Office if that's something that you use. So the conversion uh, to text is possible from page management. So that's kind of good. So yeah, a bit better than on the PDF uh, functionality, um, but we still lack uh, basic things such as reordering pages, moving a pages, page, inserting a page. Uh, so for example, here, insert a page before or after, or move the page to somewhere else and things of that nature. That's what page man management is all about for notebooks and yeah, uh, especially for notebooks. So you do have the convert to text shortcut here as well. I believe it's gonna do yeah just that page. So you can shortly just choose to convert just that page. I'm not gonna wait for it to do that. You have the Miracast option, which actually works. Whenever I tried it, it worked with every device and it works like a standard Miracast device. But the only thing is that it actually finds the, the, the devices that you wanna to connect to and it maintains connection very, very, in a very stable manner, unlike books devices, which don't. So Lenovo Smart Papers Miracast actually works. Um, then you have the share option as well, which is the same kind of thing, except I guess for the current page or maybe the whole uh, notebook. And you have pen type settings and this is your option to customize which of the brushes you want to see and you can reorder them and you can just kind of customize it to your liking which is a very nice thing to see as well and then you finally have notebook settings which is the notebook cover what it's going to show last page visited or first page so those are the options that we have here then you have layers i believe that you have like the ability to add uh, five layers traditionally that's normal let's add more this is really slow yeah so a limit of five layers stacked that's uh, standard 
Um, we'll get to the microphone unit a little bit later because that has a specific functionality which is really really cool. So let's focus on the brushes and the tools first. So with the brushes we got, uh, let's just go through them fairly quickly. I'm gonna use the thickest one. So this is the ballpoint pen. Nice and pressure sensitive. Then we have the pencil which only has the uh, yeah the brush option and it is tilt sensitive and it is of a very very nice quality extremely reminiscent of how the remarkable brush works pretty much identical uh, but i think that the kindle scribe brush uh, pencil brush is still better than either of the two but still Remarkable Smart Paper and Kindle Scribe have the best uh, graphite pencil brushes on the market currently. Uh, so it's nice to see that. And we have the mechanical pencil, which is not uh, not pressure sensitive. And it has this kind of paper-like grainy quality that you can see here which somebody may like, somebody may not like, but it is it has that type of effect to it, so it's a proper brush. Then we have the calligraphy pen, which is very familiar, isn't it? Um, then we have the uh, fine liner, which is again a not pressure sensitive and I like this one a lot it's very very precise it's easy to use it's really really cool my second favorite is the pen the ink pen itself which is basically like fine liner but it has pressure sensitive and it's nice kind of sensitivity that actually works really well um, then we get to have a marker which is of course not pressure sensitive uh, but to me the 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 marker thing should should have a lot thicker uh, brush settings because right now they're exactly the same thicknesses as the other pens and just just doesn't make sense then you have a paintbrush which suffers from the same thing and basically they are uh, very similar brushes between whoa very similar brushes uh, where are we there we go uh, like the other one like the D -D 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 marker um, and I think that they would need to be wider and then we have the highlighter which is the same highlighter as we've had in the um, uh, in the PDF reader so those are your options and then for the eraser you have the stroke eraser so the regular type of eraser that you can just erase the stuff here and it works like that or we can maybe erase a little bit here you can use the erase selection which is nice and fast and the interesting thing about it is that it doesn't e erase the strokes so you can erase just a section within here and basically just removes you know just parts over here so it doesn't ruin all of the strokes that you've had and that kind of gives it a uh, very nice and usable uh, uh, quality so that you can use it for uh, different types of things and of course you can erase the whole page then we have the selection option so i can just select this now that's selected so i can move it around nice and fast what can I, what else can i do about with it i can mirror it horizontally i can mirror it vertically i can do a cut and i can copy so it's like i can copy to clipboard and then double tap so is it like double tap to paste right so you select the uh the marker tool or the selection tool and you double tap with the pen to paste this right so that's uh kind of how that works fairly limiting but it works uh, i haven't tried scaling yet though how does it scale i'm curious i'm still very curious okay so uniform scaling 
this is for moving and for rotation we have here rotation all right this is pretty cool so basic basic but works so all the stuff that you kind of would want from or basic stuff that you would want from this is there and it works fine and you can also add pages so basically you can insert a page so let's say this is blah blah like that and can i insert a page between them so that it's blah blah empty and then the previous one yep yeah. So that you can insert a page via the plus icon here, but it would have been a nice thing to have that option in the page management as well. Now, if we have a plus button here, why is the minus button there? Why? Like, because it's notebook management? Isn't the adding a page also notebook management? So yeah, some kind of inconsistencies. You do have the option to delete the page, but you have to go into that option. You don't have it down there. So those are the brush types. I think that generally speaking, they're really, really good brushes. Uh, the stroke width uh, could use some uh, fine tuning for different brushes to kind of find the range that's most usable uh, for the expected use cases of these brushes. But overall, I think that they're on the excellent side of uh, things and there's more than a few that are very, very usable. And in combination with that region eraser that doesn't erase strokes, but it actually erases just the selection, that's a very nice thing to see as well. So overall, a nice set of tools that you have for writing, basic writing, but but what you have here is fairly, fairly good. All right, and now I'm gonna switch to a brush that I'm gonna use for writing, and I'm gonna explore the audio capabilities here. And for this, let's zoom in a little bit so that you can actually see this functionality because it's really, really cool. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start a recording here. So now it's recording, and I am going to write some content and then we'll just scribble 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 some more i'm gonna flip a page oh we have blah blah so we're gonna go further and now i am going to continue writing here okay so let's say that i'm done with the recording so now you have this recording and the recording icon is here so far nothing really new here right we've already seen that on uh, books devices made pad paper etc well not quite because if you actually click on this there's three options here and you can enable an option called note replay and of course of course you have management of the recordings which is basic as well you can't it's the same kind of rule applies they need to polish these things up but note replay is really really interesting first of all you can adjust playback speed great note replay if you turn it on and you press play ah i need to connect my bluetooth just a second all right i hooked up my um uh, headphones here to the uh, smart paper. So I'm gonna press play here and then I'm gonna move the headphone close to the microphone so that you can hear what it's playing back and you can see what we actually see. So let's start the playback now. Recording here. So now it's recording and I am going to write And then just scribble, scribble, scribble some more. I'm gonna flip a page. Oh, we have blah blah. Now it's not flipping a page automatically, but if I flip to the page that I want. And that's not all. So let's say if I press play here and I tap on a word here, it's going to jump to where in the recording you are. So if I tap on this, it's going to jump back to recording. The uh, updating of the rendering is 
weird and not really there it's buggy it's it's full of bugs but the essence of the functionality is really really good and this is something that i don't think that i've seen on uh, other platforms that it actually works like this especially with finding the recording point with your notes when you were writing something down and this is absolutely perfect for study because if you are in a lecture and you're recording the audio of that lecture and you are taking down notes when you're going back through those notes and when you want to hear what was it that the uh, uh, lecturer was talking about at that specific point in time you tap the word it jumps to the recording and you hear it presto that is just really 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 good and i just love the way that um the idea of it now the impl implementation should be ironed out and you know bugs should be fixed but the essence of it is really really good so that's a very unique thing and that's a really cool selling point that the smart paper actually has especially for students as far as apps go well file manager you saw it's just a normal regular file manager then you have the email functionality which i haven't tested out and i will not test out because i do not want to link my email accounts to uh, any other devices so i'm sorry that's not something i'm going to be testing out but since this is an android 11 i'm imagining a standard android email application type of functionality what i don't know is does it support two-factor authentication uh, protocols for Gmail, Microsoft, etc. that I really don't know. Uh, so that's something we might need to take a look at, but maybe address at a later point. Calendar, don't be fooled. You're not logged in as your Google Play account, so you don't have Google Calendar. And this is like beyond basic because there's no events planning possible whatsoever. This is just a paper replacement of a calendar. And to some extent, the good thing is that you can just kind of switch between which day you want, but you can't do anything. You can just select a day for whatever reason, then you can go back to today, okay. And then you have the option of having a yearly, take a look at it and there's no weekly look there's no daily look there's there's nothing that's it so you got monday sunday start time zone and yeah show week number is the calendar option so that's it it's it's extremely basic clock again extremely basic because it doesn't have a timer now the timer would have been a great thing an alarm would have been a great thing as well um, any kind of things those things would have been useful especially in studying capacities research capacities and things like that like at the very least the timer would have been a very nice addition but you don't have that you get this for whatever reason um, then you have a calculator which is nice especially because you do have the scientific calculator and the standard calculator options which is a very good thing to see wp office has its whole thing so if if you use wp office then you know it's basically for creating pdf files and then you can use that to create pdf files and because it has bluetooth capabilities you can hook up a bluetooth keyboard and then type your files there that way uh, I won't be having time to actually show that, but I've tested it and it works fine. It's slow, but it's usable. So yeah, basically slow, but usable. Ebook reader is like a specific app that's just for ebooks. And I've tried to use it and uh, it's like, I really, really am not a fan of something like this. So not my cup of tea at all. Uh, but I guess maybe better than the PDF reader things. So I don't know. Um, and then you have the Firefox. So let's see. Um, you can just go into opening an article. So this is how an article renders out and looks like. Okay. So fairly slow. Let's go into a fast refresh option. 
Have we crashed? No. Okay. So fast. I don't know if I, I can't really see a difference between fast and smooth. Honestly, I can't really see that it's any faster than smooth. So if I go to smooth, it just it's if anything, it's a little bit more responsive in smooth. At least that's the impression that I get. And if we go back to clear, then we should have, yeah, then we have clear, clear differences in clear mode. So that's why smooth for me made most sense. And yeah, it kind of works as you probably would expect it to uh, on a device like this. So this is a dedicated note taker that has some reader capabilities and it's just an extra on the top that you have a Firefox there that you can actually use for some browsing, but don't expect anything more than that. I tried side loading apps that didn't work for me. So maybe I was doing something wrong or not, but there's no Google play and I was not able to side load uh, any apps here. So yeah, that's, that's the state of the apps themselves. When you go into settings, you have your uh, quite a few settings here. So Lenovo ID, I'm not going to tap on that because it shares all the information and I'm uh, too lazy to actually block it out in the editing process because that's a pain. Uh, but then you have wireless, you have, Bluetooth, you have sound capabilities when you are connected to sound to adjust the, uh, the, the, the volume. Then in display, we have the brightness and color temperature, which are both accessible from here and a clear, smooth, fast. So all of these options, you have them right here. Um, then we have the general option and in general option you have about your device, you have the system updates, management of your apps to kind of uh, manage the, the, um, the permissions, uh, force stop them. You can't uninstall them because they're pre-installed. They have storage information. There's nothing you can do about this unless you go Nope. Date, time, languages that you can use, different keyboards that you can manage, and factory reset. Then after that, you have the option to set a uh, lock screen. So the wallpaper, you can choose a wallpaper of any sort. You can choose that it's a clock or that it is a calendar when you have the lock screen on. Now the security to enable a password, battery stuff, and there's one thing that's extremely important to actually mention here. And I think it should be a mandatory addition to every other device and smart paper has that. And that is the battery optimization mode. It's disabled by default, but that's something that I use on my laptop as well. And it basically protects and prolongs your battery life. But how? By if you turn it on, it will keep your battery between 40 and 60%, which is the ideal range for the batteries. And also it will automatically turn itself on if you keep the device plugged in for an extended period of time. And it also has the maintenance mode, which when enabled system would adjust battery capacity based on its condition. It would extend battery lifespan, but might influence how long battery lasts on a single charge. So it's all about the longevity here. And it's something that really, really is a good thing to see. And on top of that, you have battery saver uh, options, which are really, really good that you can actually get even more uh, out of the battery, but the battery life on its own is already really good. So you can extend it even further if you use some of the battery saver options. And then in more, you have a very important option, which I, for life of me, I don't understand why it's not on by default. And that is side buttons for the stylus. So what does that mean? Well, uh, that means that if I choose to use my uh, Samsung button, uh, Samsung button, Samsung uh, pen that has a button on the side and I start writing. If I press the button by default, it does nothing. And that was my first impression was, well, it doesn't support side buttons. Well, no, it does, but you got to go to settings a more and then enable side button. And then you can actually choose what you want the side button to work as. So it can be an eraser, can be an erase selection, or you can use also use it to create a new notebook if that's something that you really want to. So for me, it's erase selection. And now when I go into a notebook and I want to delete, 
where the button I can now properly use it and this is the thing that this awesome pen is missing like why why couldn't it have a button or an eraser at the end then it would have been perfect but you know Samsung pen is a cheap uh, relatively cheap pen and an excellent pen at that so it does give you quite a lot it's just that you know it would have been nice to have been a full package all right so it's the conclusion time for the Lenovo smart paper and as usual let's begin with the cons well the first con would have to be the cumulative state of the reader experience and functionality while it can open pdf and epub files mainly on epubs it's more or less okay but the pdf's state is below rudimentary the pen that is shipped with the device while absolutely excellent lacks an eraser or a button even though the device actually has that functionality there are inconsistencies all over the place as far as the user interface and user experience goes uh, page management of documents is not the same it doesn't have the same functionalities as the page management of the notebooks but generally speaking beef you know i i don't want this to turn into a huge list of cons but i need to kind of encompass all of it is that the general state of the user interface and user experience while it is intuitive and I get completely get the minimalistic approach I'm not talking about that I'm talking about minimum viable product and in many many aspects the software solutions that are currently in place for Lenovo smart paper they don't reach that MVP because you don't have the bare bone basics that is something that's generally really really needs a lot of work and a lot of tlc to actually get it to a point where it can be because where this can be is a really good place but it's not there yet the excellent paper-like uh, foil that's applied on the top which is absolutely perfect for writing it has excellent reflection uh, properties unfortunately it does have a negative effect on the image quality and clarity so that's something that you have to kind of keep in mind especially when you consider it that it's uh, paired with a 227 ppi display and for me above all above everything else is going to be the biggest con is the business model of charging for all of the things separately in some way i get it you know the the thing the thought process is it's cheaper because not everybody's going to need everything totally get it but i think that the pricing is too steep and i think that that is going to be a no-go for a lot of people and for a product that is specifically tailored and aimed at students to actually pull off something like that, 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 that's a big, big ask, especially with the base price being 500 euros to begin with. And now on to the pros of the smart paper. Lenovo smart paper build quality is absolutely fantastic and I love 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 the design of this device the front light is really uniform the battery life is really good the latency the writing latency is excellent it has multiple refresh modes even though they are not really that kind of varied but it does offer more than what Kindle scribe and remarkable to do so that or the super note as well so that's something that's definitely uh, a thing Thing to kind of keep in mind and for me it's a pro because you do have that even though it's a small type of flexibility the flexibility is there the included pen is of an excellent quality and even though it does lack that button and eraser which is a big big problem for me for those who don't really care about that they will be able to enjoy a really really good pen that comes as standard with Lenovo smart paper uh, when we're talking about the uh, standard well the flipbook cover that's also included with the Lenovo smart paper I think is a really really good way of doing it especially Especially with this uh, protective pouch that ensures that you will not lose your pen when it's in a bag when you're transporting 
transporting it in uh, other places etc etc i love the voice functionality that you can actually match the voice and note taking that's not something that i've seen before and i think that it's an excellent addition to the platform the thinness and lightness of the device it's really really uh, special to actually have a front lit device with such a good high quality front light that's actually this thin so this is a really really thin device and it's a joy to use and basically it, it just makes me happy it's a really gorgeous looking and a good well-rounded design device um, hardware wise software wise definitely has a long way to go but the potential is at least quite quite strong so the lenovo smart paper what is the summary of this device i think that it has a lot of potential but when we're talking about the wait time uh, and the price that's included, I think that it should have had a better state of the operating system uh, at the day of launch. If you are going to delay the device anyway, then you might as well delay it so that when you launch it, it's complete. This currently does not feel complete. This feels like a early, early beta that still has at least one quarter of development, so like at least three more months of development time to actually gather feedback from people, implement features and, and get uh, the feature stack up to the MVP. There's a huge discrepancy between note taking and the reader. And this is like a deja vu because when Remarkable came out, it also was a lot stronger in the note-taking department, like the Lenovo Smart Paper is, and a lot, tremendously lot weaker in the reader department, exactly like the Lenovo Smart Paper is. Now, whether or not these things are going to change over time, I don't know, because I really don't have that kind of experience with Lenovo. I have my experience with a standard Lenovo Android tablet, and the updates there were sporadic at best. So it wasn't really something that I would say that it's stellar performing, certainly not on level of where Remarkable and Rata actually are as far as the frequency of the updates goes, as far as the content goes, yeah, that's a different thing. Um, but we will see where this is. The initial state of that tablet, the Lenovo Tab P11 Pro, was a lot better and more completed than this. So. I don't know if Lenovo is going to implement the same uh, strategy and basically have few and sporadic updates for this. Lenovo are a huge, huge company and I don't know how much priority are they going to give this one depending on how it sells and how it shows in the market. I personally feel that the hardware is really special and the device itself is extremely good and that the potential is uh, way too high and somebody has a vision there for the Lenovo Smart Paper, but it hasn't been realized yet and it's being hampered down by the user experience and the user interface. I think that's a great shame, sim simply because with a little bit more tender love and care, Lenovo Smart Paper can become one of the most important devices and the biggest contenders and most important contenders for both the uh, Amazon Scribe and the Remarkable 2 because it can blow them out of water. It is beautiful design, excellent performance, everything is there. But the current state, as it is now, it can't, it's lacking quite a lot of things. I think that it's uh, out of the three, if we're talking about Remarkable 2, Amazon Scribe, and the Lenovo Smart Paper as your pure digital paper replacements, because I had a discussion with somebody who actually mentioned, like, there's a difference. If I, I want digital paper replacement, I don't want digital notebook replacement. I don't know, there was like, okay, if you're gonna differentiate that much, but still, if you want purely digital paper and not digital notebook, because as far as digital notebooks goes, nothing beats Supernote. There's no way that you can beat the Supernote. But as far as digital paper goes, distraction free and stuff, um, Remarkable would still be number one. Very close behind it is creeping up uh, Amazon Kindle Scribe, but it's still number two. And a little bit far behind it, them is the Lenovo Smart Paper as it is now. I think the price would be adequate 
if again the state of the operating system was more complete and that the platform was able to offer a little bit more of a complete user experience than it is now. I think that all hinges on Lenovo's approach on how they will treat this device. Will they treat it with love, attention and care that it most certainly deserves to reach its potential? Or will it be the cruel capitalistic world where they just kind of, you know, go swim, but you didn't give me any floaters, I can't, I don't have anything to swim with. And they just say like, well, tough luck and kind of let it fall down the cracks? I hope not. I sincerely hope not because this is a special device and it deserves to reach its potential. Whether or not it gets there over time, it only remains for us to wait and see. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please like and subscribe and ding the notification bell in the description below to get notified when new videos come out on my deep guide. Also, please do let me down, do let me down. <laughs> also, please let me know down in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are regarding the Lenovo Smart Paper. Does anybody out there actually have the device? What do you think about it? What are you, what's your prolonged usage experience, etc., etc. Because I test so many devices here, I can only spend a relatively limited amount of time. I still do spend uh, quite a bit of time with them, but it's not the same as actually living with a device and using it over an expanded, extended period of time. And since this was actually on the market now for about two months, I'm really curious if there's somebody out there who's using it and what your experience and opinion actually is. Especially if you had some other device like Remarkable or Kindle Scribe, how do you feel it compares to those two? I'm also interested to hear about uh, what your opinion is regarding the Lenovo Novo's uh, billing strategy per uh, specific kind of thing because it can go good it can go bad of course obviously the best would be free but it's not so when it's not free would you prefer like a bulk thing like a subscription that's all-encompassing but a bit more expensive or this micro segmentation that they are doing so that you can order per need when you need it and finally like, what do you feel like if this is aimed towards students, how do you feel the pricing of these services actually is? Is it fair, unfair, obscene, <laughs> or whatever it is else that you may feel? Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and see you in the next video. Bye.